In this video, I am going to show how the freeze drying process could be visualized in the state diagram and how the physical and chemical stability of a dried food could be determined. First, we can look at the freeze drying process considering its operating conditions. We need to understand the conditions of freeze drying as compared to air and vacuum drying. Consider we are drying apple rings. Water in the apple should be in the frozen state, that is low temperature and second the pressure of the drying chamber should be below 612 Pascal. In this condition, solid ice can be sublimated, that is ice to water vapor without phase transition to liquid. First, the, place the frozen or fresh sample in the freeze drying chamber. Set the temperature of the chamber below freezing, for example, minus 40 degrees C. In this case, refrigeration system can be started to cool the chamber. When the system is reached at the set temperature, we can turn on the vacuum pump and it can start to vacuum the chamber. We need to set the pressure below 612 Pascal so that ice could be sublimated to vapor. We could use heater to set the freeze drying temperature after achieving the vacuum pressure. For example, we can set the heater at 20 degrees C. Problem statement. Draw the freeze drying paths of apple slices in the state diagram. Given initial temperature 20 degrees C and moisture content 95%. Product is first frozen to minus 60 degrees C and then chamber pressure is reduced to 200 Pascal. Then the product is dried to moisture content 5% and it is stored at 25 degrees C after freeze drying. Freeze drying is at minus 60 degrees C and freezing is performed at relatively slow cooling. We need to identify the state and stability of the freeze dried apple slices during storage at 25 degrees C. A state diagram is a stability map that presents different states or phases as a function of water and temperature. Now we need to mark the characteristic points of the state diagram of apples as shown in this slide. First, I would like to explain different components of the state diagram. X-axis is the solid mass fractions and Y-axis is the temperature. G is the glass transition line and it decreases with the decrease of solids due to plasticization with water. F is the freezing curve and it decreases with the increase of solids due to freezing point depression. Now I would like to show the characteristic points in the state diagram. TM dash is the ultimate maximal freeze concentration melting temperature that is when maximal freeze frozen water is formed. TG triple dash is the glass transition before ice melting and it is the ultimate maximal freeze concentration glass transition temperature. TZ double dash is the hypothetical maximal freeze concentration temperature that is intersection of the freezing curve to the glass transition line by maintaining similar curvature of the freezing curve F. TZ dash is the conceptual maximal freeze concentration glass transition temperature and it is vertical line crossing TM dash to the glass line. XS dash is the conceptual maximal freeze concentration solids and it is defined as the vertical line passing through TM dash and TZ dash and crossing X axis. All these characteristic temperatures are measured by DSC using defined protocols. 
More explanations of these terminologies are given in our published papers and the references are given in the description box. Now we can see the glassy, rubbery solution and frozen regions in the state diagram. Now we need to draw the freeze drying path in the state diagram. F is the freezing curve, G is the glass transition line, and TM dash is the maximal freeze concentration condition. First we need to locate the initial temperature 20 degrees C and moisture content 95% as mark point A. It is in the rubber state. Second, we need to locate the freeze drying temperature as minus 60 degrees C and then we need to locate the final moisture content 5% and 25 degrees C. It is marked as 0.2 and it is the glassy state. Therefore, the final product is at the glassy state and it is stable considering the glass transition concept. Third, we need to freeze the apple at minus 60 degrees C. Apple can be cooled and we can reach the 0.3 on the freezing curve as soon as we are at the freezing point. We can then follow the freezing line and can reach to the point 4 that is at the end of freezing process. At this point all possible freezable water is at ice and after this point there should not be any sublimation. We can follow the freezing curve since it is relatively slow cooling. After freezing, we need to reduce the chamber pressure at 200 Pascal so that sublimations can be achieved. Please note that we must have pressure less than 612 Pascal to achieve sublimation. When sublimation is completed, then we can reach the point 0.5 that is freeze drying temperature minus 60 degrees C. After point 0.5 vacuum drying can be started and we can move from point 0.5 to point 0.6 since the freezing temperature is set at minus 60 degrees C. We can have vacuum drying in this part since there is no ice and water is the unfreezable water. This process of drying would be very slow since it is operated at low pressure and the sample is very viscous. We are operating this part in the glassy state, therefore less damage to the apple slice could occur. We are now reaching final moisture at 0.6 and then we can move to 0.2 at the storage temperature 25 degrees C. The final sample is at the 0.2 in the state diagram which is below the glass transition line. Therefore, the apple slice would be stable based on the glass transition concept. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Please subscribe to this channel if you would like to watch similar videos.